the closing keynote speech at the Eco Mobility World Congress 2017 in Kaohsiung. Time flies and we have come towards the end of the Congress. For this session, we will be covering the issue of climate change mitigation, sustainable sustainability development in mobility. And I would like to introduce to you the moderator of the closing keynote, Mr. Shu Zhu, who is the regional director at Ikle East Asia Secretariat from Seoul, South Korea. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the moderator, Mr. Shu Zhu. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Chu Shu from Ikle Regional Secretariat for East Asia. I hope all of you enjoy the lunch and you are not feeling that sleepy now. Today, we are approaching the closing plenary of the three days Eco Mobility Congress. And we have heard a lot of debates in the past two days of the different perspectives, views, insights from various stakeholders, including the local government leaders, academia, and the civil society organizations. But today we are going to hear the perspective from the business sector, a business leader who is leading a group that has been devoting to driving sustainable urban mobility and development. So I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Bruce Jen, who is the founder of a large international company, Delta Group, who will deliver a keynote speech about how the private sector can contribute to sustainable urban mobility. So let's welcome Mr. Bruce Chen for this keynote speech. Chen 能够与全球各个城市的决策者共同来享受科技的进步的成果之余的话呢因为那个时候工业发展快速缺电全球第一的电源供应器的一个厂商 to provide innovative, clean and energy efficient for better tomorrow, 
这个这个这个呃公司的使命，我们中文呢把它翻译成实践这个环保节能、爱惜地球的生态。在这个使命当中，我们也是同仁们呢很努力的去做各种节能的产品。那么，管氏最近七年所生产的电源产品，就替全球的客户呢节省两百零八亿度的电。台达从这个二零一一年开始，我们连续七年呢，入选为道琼永续世界指数这个的厂商，同时呢，从二零一四年呢。连续三年入选为接这个碳接入的计划，就是 D D C D P 的气候变迁的领导等级。更在全体的同仁努力之下呢，将这个单位产值的用电密度，我们花了五年很努力在做，节省了五十。就说这个产品过去。这个价，它，比如说一百万美金的产品，过去用多少电，到了五年以后，我们不断的想办法来做改善呢，结果跟五年前比啊，只用了一半的电。为了达到这个全人类永续生存的愿景，台达呢，也把这个科学方法跟减碳的目标，提交给由。各个国际组织所成立的科学基础目标倡议组织，就是这个 SBTI， 以这个具体的行动，与这个全球接近三百家的顶尖的企业呢，共同为推动更低碳这方面来做努力。然而，全球二氧化碳的这个排放量啊。事实上，那么已经连续多年呢，造成历史的新高。尽管这个三年来似乎还是一直往上升呢，没有看到有反转过来下降的趋势，也让地球的温度呢持续的升高。假若是这个要控制升温的，像我们。在巴黎协会里头的两度的目标的话，不论政府、城市、企业以及民间的团体呢，都应该共同携手，才能够让这个温室气体的排放呢，把它下降下来。近几年来呢，各国已经尽了各种力量来降低对这个化石燃料的依赖。这个使得能源部门产出，呃，这个及使用呢更加低碳化。那唯独在交通运输方面呢，相关的领域啊，依旧是在逐年成长之中。国际能源署就是 IEA 统计指出呢，全球每年接近一半的石油啊。是用在交通工具上面。以这个汽车王国美国来做个例子，这个运输部门不但是消耗掉该国的七成的石油，更排放了这个全美三分之一的温室气体。此此外的话，根据麻省理工学院，就是 MIT 的研究啊。这个美国一年由于道路交通所排的空气的污染啊，他说害死了超过五万人。运输部门减碳的方法其实很多，比如说在解决方案当中呢，可以说电动车是一个最受瞩目的一项。这个精精准来说呢，根据 IEA 最新的报告。要达到二零五零年减碳的目标的话，那个时候大概全球百分之七十的车辆啊，都需要。
改成用电动车。事实上呢，早在二零零五年呢，台湾的代理商那个时候，这个日本做出一些油电混合车的时候呢，台湾还没有，还没有销售。那么我就请我们在美国的分公司的同事呢，给我买一部啊 ，Toyota p i r i s 的油电混合车到台湾来。当时我们计算一下运费，还有这个本地认证的这个费用，还有进口税等等啊，把它加起来，似乎比这个买车子还花更多的钱。但是实际上使用下来的话呢，每公升的汽油，那么跟同行的这个汽车比起来呢，可以呃节省了很多，大概每公升行驶呢可以接近三十公里。现在的油电混合车跟电动车也越来越多，我相信到今天的话应该更进步。台大因为在电源转换技术的领先全球，近年来呢，也与世界级的知名厂商合作，开发这个泳池同步的车用驱动马达等等设备，透过结构、还有磁路、还有散热优化，还有呢，让它更小，就是提升马达的功率密度，还有峰值效率呢。可以已经做到百分之九十五 p e r c e n 以上。台达所开发的车载充电器，这是另外一个大的项目呢。不但能够这个让能源转换效率到达了九十六点五 p e r c e n 的的这个效率，在七十度的这个极端的环境当中呢，也能够满载来运用。这这件事情曾经最近得到通运公司，就 General Motor 在底特律的公开表扬。实际上，因为我们做开关电源，所以在这个很冷的天气的话呢，在这个零下很多度的状况，我们的东西也很可靠。假如要想让电动车能够快速的成长，城市里的充电桩。跟充电站这些基础设施啊，是一个很关关键的一个产品。那么，中国大陆目前是全球最大的电动车市场，预计它在二零二零年呢，那个要建建成四百八十万个分散式的充电桩，以满足全中国五百万辆电动车的需求。在沿海城市呢，加速的发展地区，还有一些烟霾的比较严重的地区的话呢，也要求公共这个充电桩，这个跟电动车的数量赶快把它增加起来。这个充充电桩，公共充电桩跟车辆啊，它是定在。比例呢不能够低于一比七的一个比例。台达在电动车充电这个设施的布局，在中国大陆乃至在全球都在快速的发展之中，包括目前电动车占有率很高的挪威，我就是刚才讲气候非常寒冷，在冬天的时候，还有包括德国、西班牙、瑞典、荷兰等呢。都采用我们的这个充电充电桩。除了这个电动车充电器以外，城市的电力基础设备更新也是另外一个关键。英国曾经有研究指出呢，假如让一辆电池用尽的电动车把它充饱的话呢，相当于一般住家三天的用电量。假如没有良善的充电管理，只要有六辆电动车同时来充电的话，我们旧的电网呢，可能就会产生电压不足的状况。未来这个全英国恐怕有七十万的用户用电呢
会受到影响。那台达所开发的充电站管理系统呢，借由调整电动车充电的优先次序跟充电的功率，优化电力负载。保障电力设备的稳定，配合台达所生产的电网整合，还有锂电池的这个，我们把锂电池很多的锂电池呢，摆在货柜里面，不论是对电动车或者是太阳能板，这个再生再生能源呢，都能够提供让它的电压能够更稳定。除了电动车以外呢，台达也投入在道路照明解决方案。台达供应的 LED 照明产品，包括各类的型的高效率的驱动电源，还有工业的灯具以及这个智能的路灯等等的的解决方案。目前 LED 的路灯在高雄，很感谢呢，高雄。我们的占比几乎是第一。另外呢，也有城市这个导入台达 LED 智能控制的解决方案。那么，即使能够监控并且主动的回报异常的状况，我们的台达电子的子公司 l a w y e r t e c h Electronics， 为了呃 Manchester。机场啊，打造了这个智慧照明系统。这个二零一六年呢，荣获英国的 Lex Award 工业与交通照明的大赏，搭配了机场全面更换 LED 照明，该机场节省了八十九 percent 的照明电力，一年呢可以节省七七百万度的电。未来台达。也将路灯打造成智慧灯杆，可以整合智慧路灯，还有摄像机、显示器、四 G 的 LTE 无线小型基站，跟电动车充电桩等等系统融合在一起。除了这个路上的交通以外呢，我想一谈到高雄啊，也会提到。另外一件事呢，就是港埠的管理。那么以以往的话，船舶靠岸呢，都需要用柴油机让它运行。那假若是使用岸电的话呢，也可以大幅的减少九十六 percent 的粒状这个污染物。台达的起重解决方案呢，搭配了电能回馈单元，就是把当它重量很很重这个下来的时候呢，利用它的位能呢，把这个电能把它回收，那么有效的节能，也在世界很多港口来使用。除了交通减碳的议题以外呢，相信各位与会的贵宾们，这个在开会的空档呢，大概已经到隔壁的会场去参观我们的绿建筑。台达绿建筑特展，这个特展啊，实际上是台达过去十几年来盖了二十多栋绿建筑，把它一次把它呈现，用这个画面了，或者是一些呃这个东西呢，把它呈现出来。根据 IPCC 的报告，建筑物的节能。高达百分之五十到七十五 percent， 这个估算的话呢，真的是让台达把它证实了。台达第一栋的绿建筑呢，在台南的工厂，那么那个时候盖起来以后呢，跟同型的建筑物比，节能百分之三十五，节水百分之五十。到后面的话，我们。这个捐建到校园的建筑物节能呢，这个跟同类的建筑比呢，也是突破了很多。在台达旧建筑呢，也同样的，我们把尝试一下，把我们的旧建筑看看怎么来改善，能够节能
我们在台北的总部的办公室叫瑞观大楼的例子呢，我们把它改建了以后，跟五年前相比，用电量呢就实实在在,在的减少了四十 percent。另外，我们新建的一个美洲的新总部，今年七月的发电量啊，已经超出了它本身的用电量，并且进一步的挑战呢，全年达到近零耗能的一个记录。可见绿建筑的技术呢，仍然继续不断的在进步。我们也是透过了台达基金会的。活动呢，把这个概念、把这个经验，把它呃分享出去。此外呢，我们也把绿建筑的经验用在灾后的重建工作上。在二零零九年莫拉莫拉克这个台风过境以后啊，我们替这个原住民在高雄的山区。那马下呢，建立一所小学，这个小学的这个建筑的形状啊，是比照原住民的习惯来建的，所以跟一般的建筑物有很大的差异。这个建筑物使用了以后，我们就发现，它一年全年每平方米的用电量，我们一般叫 EUI 呢，不到。七度。那么，假若是计算太阳能发电输回电网的电的话呢，这个民权国小已经在二零一五年呢，成为全台湾一座零耗能的一个校园。这个绿建筑呢，平常是一个校园，到时候有灾难、台风的时候呢，也可以个。作为全村的避难中心，我受到让这个受到土石流威胁的当地原住民朋友呢，能够提供一个水电无虞的安全避难场所。目前台达已经一共建建立了二十五栋，后面好像又增加了一些。二十多栋的这个绿建筑厂房，那么有的是自己用，有的是捐给学校做学这个学校的大楼。假如不计算捐建的建筑，我们自己使用的建筑，我们这个从二零一六年就节省了超过一千四百六十万度的电。事实证明呢，节能一半呢。不是一种口号，实际上已经做到了。继续努力下去的话呢，效果还会更好。最近几年，该有越来越多的企业选用概率建筑，不仅节能减碳了，环境也更舒适、更健康。这次的策展啊，正逢的我们研发了。八 K 的 Super High Vision 投影机成功，所以呢，在这个呃这个场合呢，我们把我们全世界第一台运用台达专利技术所做的这个投影机呢，展示给各位贵宾。那么它的细致程度实际上是 Full HD 的十六倍，它的色域的话呢？也涵盖了七十五 percent 以上的自然色，比传统规范啊，它只要求百分之三十五呢，高了很多。而且，镭射投影机的光源估计可以使用长达两万小时。那么，一般像这么亮的这个越亮的传投影机的话，用寿命就越短，因为它的温度非常高。所以这个投影机的寿命呢，我们估计下来，有机会跟同类型、同样光度的投影机，这个光源呢，这个使用的时间是二十八倍。欢迎
，大家穿过这个右边的走廊啊，就可以体验到我们八 K 的投影机。那个这这台投影机呢，它是亮度是两万六千流明，屏幕是两百八十寸。过去我们投影机很多做到三万流米，甚至还更高。面对打造永续城市的挑战啊，相信在座的各位呢，也是尽其所能的把心力专注在相关的规划上面。以上呢，仅提供台达一些粗浅的经验，也希望能让各位对交通跟建筑节能上面呢。更加有信心，那么共同打造低碳的未来。谢谢各位，请各位多多指教，谢谢。谢谢周先生。那么刚才郑先生介绍的台达的一些理念，还有他的一些实践啊，那么在开始的时候提到了，由于这个化石能源的大量使用，导致城市的这个交通。它带来的一系列挑战，尤其非常重要的一个就是空气污染。那么作为我来讲呢，我个人是生活在首尔和北京这样亚洲的两个大城市，我对于空气污染是感同身受，也是体会非常深刻啊。那么因为时间的关系呢，我们就不设这个互动问答的环节。但是呢，我们想呢，因为郑先生的演讲非常精彩，我只给一个这个。评论的机会啊，就不不不来问答了啊，因为下面呢，我们坐着很多，也看到有很多地方政府的领袖代表。那么刚才郑先生从企业的角度谈了他们台达的一些实践，我想有没有哪个地方政府的代表能够做一个评点，或者是从您的角度，您怎么看郑先生刚才分享的他的见解？请示意我们工作人员会把话筒拿过去，就一个机会啊。Anyone would like to make a comment? Very quick comment. Probably this gentleman. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Emmanuel, a mayor from Kampala. It's quite a good presentation and uh, a good contribution to the development and. Uh, to fighting omission in, in, in the world. So I've seen it has helped a lot. Mine goes to Africa. What contribution are you intending to do in Africa? At least you have done a lot to Europe and the US. But my proposal is and that if we are thinking about development, with these good innovations, Africa has a lot of raw materials, and it up to raw materials for such projects if they are to come to Africa. And whenever you have developed any innovation, at least you should consider those developing countries, because Europe or, or the world can't develop in isolation. It should develop with other developing countries so that we can have a better. World in the future. Thank you. 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 包括在建筑能效方面，那么我本人呢，也有一点小小的观感。听了刚才郑先生的这个演讲，也是深受启发。昨天我也有兴趣参观了咱们的这个绿柱记的这个展馆啊。我觉得能源的转型和推动城市的这个呃生态交通呢，我们既要开源又要节流。就像刚才我们台达集团的这样一个经验一样，既要去考虑推动可再生的清洁的新能源的一个使用。那么降低它的这个使用的成本啊，包括像电动汽车以前成本是很高的，那么它没有大规模普及，但现在这个趋势已经非常明显，很多国家已经明确的划定了一个时间表，在二零五零年，比如说啊有些城市
全面的淘汰燃油的机车，换成电动车。包括在中国大陆，在未来的十几年内有四百八十万辆的电动汽车。那么另外一个呢，就是要节流，而且这个潜力更大，也就是要提升我们的能效，包括在交通领域，包括在建筑领域。这样子既做到开源，又做到节流，才能够真正的推动在这些领域的可持续发展。那么另外一个观感呢，就是说。从我们刚才正先作为企业家的角度呢，实际上是一个实践者和先行者。我们的地方政府呢，我觉得非常需要跟我们的企业去密切的配合。加上我们像伊克莱这样的公民社会组织呢，我们搭建这么一个良好的国际合作的网络，大家一起来从说到做，突破这个知叫什么？呃，我们讲叫知易行难，就是很容易去讲。但是行动起来很难。我们非常欢迎像郑先生这样的企业家、这样的行动者，跟我们的政府一起，跟我们的国际社会、国际组织一起，大家一起行动起来，推动我们迈向一个可持续的未来。谢，最后再次感谢郑先生今天的精彩演讲，也谢谢各位，谢谢，谢谢。谢谢，非常谢谢郑从华董事长，也非常感谢朱树总监。Once again, a big thank you to Mr. Bruce Zheng as well as the moderator, Mr. Zhu Shu. Thank you very much. Please be seated. 我们也在这里跟各位预告一下，台达电的特展会到十月三十号。Also, I would like to take the opportunity to inform you that the featured exhibition put on by Delta will go on until October the thirtieth. So please do take the opportunity to visit the exhibition. 各位与会的贵宾，时间过得真的非常的快。我们今天已经来到了。第三天的会议即将接近尾声了。So, ladies and gentlemen, we have now come almost towards the end of the Congress. So, very shortly, we are going to conduct the closing plenary as well as to proceed with the Gaosheng Declaration. 我们在过一小段时间即将要进行的是我们这一次的生态交通全球大会的闭幕式以及高雄宣言。我们待会呢会先进行闭幕的论坛，跟大家要讨论的主题是城市中的生态交通远景。So, following up, we will proceed with the closing plenary on the future of mobility in our cities. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to join me to give a warm welcome to the moderator of this session, Deputy Secretary General Monica Zimmerman of Eclay. 我们再次欢迎 Eclay 的副秘书长 Monica Zimmerman. Can you make this work? Welcome to that uh, final plenary. I can't imagine that three days are over so quickly. This is really amazing, and I'm very happy that so many of you are are here now to to help us to wrap up and to do our thinking what our our next steps are. So I will soon present to you our panelists, but before that. I would like to share with you the warm words from the colleague of Mayor Chen from Bonn. Can you make it happen, please?、Um, the mayor of Bonn, Mr. Ashok Sridharan, who is also the Iklai Vice President, who is also the host to the next UN conference on climate, the COP23, he addresses us in a short video. Excellencies, esteemed audience, thank you for letting me be a part of the third Eco Mobility World Festival and Congress. And please accept my sincere apologies for not being with you in person. First of all, congratulations to the city of Kaohsiung for taking this important step towards creating more sustainable mobility culture. Transporting people and goods is a central element of urban life. The way how mobility is organized defines the quality of life in our communities and affects safety, accessibility, equity, and the quality of air in our cities. And 
sustainable mobility solutions carry high potential for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Mayors and local leaders unite in pushing for a low carbon transformation for good reasons. If sustainability and climate thinking is integrated across all parts of urban life and urban development, our communities become healthier and more livable. The Kaohsiung Declaration sends a message of determination local and regional governments are willing and ready to transform their cities. Ecomobility will support them in putting sustainability and climate first when thinking about the future of transport. I record this message in the World Conference Center in Bonn. In November, this will be the main negotiation area of COP23, the 23rd UN Climate Change Conference. Cities and regions will have a say and a space in this conference. The Minister President of North Rhine Westphalia and I, in my capacities as Mayor of Bonn and First Vice President of ICLE, will jointly host the climate summit of local and regional leaders on this November 12th. As nations strive to implement the Paris Agreement, local and regional governments are uniting for climate and stepping up for climate action, for the benefit of our communities and for our global environment. My best wishes to Kao Chung and the dedicated government and my sincere hopes to see many of you in Bonn. Please, Mayor Chen, Deputy Mayors, Council Leaders, take this also as the welcome of our Vice President to you for this final plenary. So we are now looking Excellencies, into esteemed audience, thank you for letting me be a part. Once is fine. So we are now looking in the future of mobility in our cities, and we are doing that in three parts. The first part is one where many of the visitors are so curious about what do you think, you, rep representatives, responsible uh, personalities in, in Kaohsiung, what do you think are the local legacies? What will happen in and with Hamasen, maybe after we left? <laughs> and for that, we will uh, welcome Deputy Mayor Xu in a minute. Later in the panel, we will discuss some global legacies, and we will wrap up with bringing together some next steps. May I ask you, Deputy Mayor? And he will share with us what is known about the legacies of this festival and this congress for the Hamasan area and the city of Kaohsiung. Uh, okay. 谢谢大家。我在这边有几点, 哦, 那从刚开始的时候 80%的人反对这样的一个生态交通的活动 到现在为止我们相信有超过80%的人认同这样的一个生态交通这样的一个行动跟价值 那同时这样的一个文化协会也是负责我们这一次的这个所有在地的导览好所有这个志工老师的呃聚集的地方那我看到这一个协会他接受预约的导览超过两百八十团总共接待的人数会超过五千人有来自高雄跟其他城市的学
一个排骨饭，这个更是一个最高的享受。再回过头来，我想第二点，我们在很高兴在这一个场合，有六大洲，超过五十个。呃，国家的城市一千两百位的这个会员共同的参与，那呃，我想在城市这样的一个城市，我们对生态交通，我们具有更高的理想性，我们具有更高的这个呃，勇于去尝试的这一个特质，所以我想，其实，在未来，全世界朝着生态永续。这样的一个进步，这样的一个城市联盟，绝对是最强的一个动力。那最后一点，我回到我们自己高雄市政府的团队，我想在这经过这一年多的努力，我们再度确认了高雄市政府作为朝向一个生态永续、生态交通跟宜居城市的一个呃施政的价值。那这样的一个施政价值包含，我想我们应该要试出更多的。这个公共空间保留给行人、跟自行车，还有大众运输。第二个，我们呃，应该要建制更多以人为本的大众运输的呃这样的一个机制。那第三个，我们当然要适度的去抑制私人的运具。我想，经过这一年多的努力，我们再度的确认了这样的一个价值。那这样的一个确认，是所有我们今天呃。所有的城市代表以及哈马星的呃所有的著名给我们的。那在会议之前，我们其实有一位议员同仁，他其实问了一句话：人类的文明从便利、从不便利走向便利，那现在又要从某种程度的便利走向不便利，到底为什么？呃，我想我今天可以跟大家报告，这个答案就在于我们希望能够拥有更生态、更永续、更宜居的城市，以及能够更细细去品尝这一个城市文化的空间。再一次谢谢大家，谢谢。Do you think Hamasen will be in November, as it was in August? Do you think Hamasen will be in November, as it was in August? All goes back as before, or is something changing in the long time? <laughs> Please. Uh, 老实说。我认为会有某种程度的恢复到原来的生活，那这个也正是我们未来其实必须要更加努力的这个空间。这样的一个创新的行动，我刚刚提过，它具有某种程度的实验性质。我们也很必须要很务实的去看待。呃，当我们完全进了两步之后。如果我们只往后退一步，我当我们下次就有往前再进三步的机会。Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Who of you actually has been to Hamasen? Have you all been there? I know a few who even had no time to go to Hamasen, but I know that they will come back. I hope many of you will come back, and we will visit Kaohsiung maybe in three months, six months, one year, and then I think we are all looking how will Hamasen look like, and which ideas from Hamasen will be brought. To other parts of Kaohsiung. So the next round of our talk here is the global legacies, and I would like to invite our panelists. Their names should have been. Please come up, all the panelists. I invite Robin Chase, whom you have seen earlier this morning. So I think you are introduced, Robin. Clayton Lane. Where is Clayton? Clayton Lane from ITTP. Hui Yi Chong, please come. She is the vice president of the National Transformation Plan implementation of the Greater Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. I invite Tim Schubert, please come. He is a senior mobility expert of the German Environmental Agency. 
and I invite Andrea Garcia, our ICLE Eco Mobility Program Manager. Later, I hope that some local government representatives will join us in that discussion. So, my question to you is, in a minute, what you perceive as the lasting ideas which you are bringing back home, how do you perceive the themes which have been discussed here? But before we do so, Robin and I want to share with you two legacies which we already have, which have been mentioned this morning, but now we are presenting them to you again. I want to say, first off, I spent 12 hours in Kaohsiung. It has been fabulous, and the volunteers have been incredible. So you, those of you from this city should feel very proud of the how many volunteers and how delightful they are. Really. So just thinking as we come to this closing, I wanted to remind us all again of the sense of urgency that climate change is coming down on us so fast. I know it's hotter here than it usually is, and in North America right now, it has been a series of calamities as we see around the world. So I want you to keep the urgency in mind of climate change and also the urgency of the speed at which tr technology is transforming our transportation possibilities in good ways and in bad ways as I think about the future of autonomous vehicles. We have no time to waste. I know that all of you are here because you care about transportation. And when you're feeling powerless in other parts of your life, this is your moment. This is, where, this is your area of expertise where we need you to get and do the right things. There's no one else that we can be relying on. It is each one of us who care about transportation to help get this done. So it's our turn to do big things right now. So I've been worried about these issues for a long time. And um, over the last seven months, I've been working with 10 large global NGOs from around the world to come up with a group of principles that we all agreed were completely true. And we have put these together. They're called the, called the shared mobility principles. All of you in your bags got posters of those shared mobility principles. And there's a poster there of what it looks like also. And our hope with this is to make you able to go back to your cities and to say, this is what people from around the world, different organizations, all agree. We all agree this, these are the things that need to get done and that you can use this with our power behind you, that we're all here with you to say these are the things that we should address. The Kaohsiung principles are built on the back of those things. They are very, very similar and is an example of what you need to do in your cities. You need to take these 10 principles and adapt them to your, to your city exactly. Um, I think that's enough. Do you want me to say more? Thank you, Robin. Well, I think we should mention that today actually is the official launch yes. of these shared mobility principles. So from today on, this is internationally communicated. So the yes. shared principles will always be associated with the name of Kaohsiung. And the city of Kaohsiung actually was also the first local government to endorse these shared mobility principles. They are open for endorsements for many more, yes. but I think, Robin, you are even further going now to companies, to yes. many NGOs, to research, to university, so that they all can consider how they translate right. them into their realities. Right? So when you look at these principles that are online at sharedmobilityprinciples.org, you'll see this on your poster, also written at the bottom. Um, we wrote this in such a way that Mayors can endorse it, secretaries of transportation can endorse it, private sector companies, NGOs, famous people. It is, these are words that everyone should be able to, to have as aspiration. This is our vision. This is the direction we are going. These are not things we promised to accomplish to have done today. No one has done all these things today. But these are things that we all strive to do. So I would encourage you to use this, again, these these principles as, please endorse this, you private sector 
taxi company, you startup, you car company, you mayor, that you should be using this, and again, with the weight of all of you who share in the declaration and all of the NGOs and the future endorsers that we are all behind you, we are all in agreement. All of these people say this is the way forward. Thank Thanks. you, Robin. So, we were very fortunate that these shared principles became ready, so to say, uh, actually a few days ago. And in the preparation of this Congress, and in a very close cooperation with the city of Kaohsiung, when we were preparing the Kaohsiung Declaration, the final document of that Congress, we said, let's take these strategies or these principles and make our strategies out of these. Sorry, we are still mixing up a little bit the principles and the strategies. Um, so the Kaohsiung strategies for the future of urban mobility is now the first document which takes these principles and translates these into the reality of one relevant group. And here it is the local governments, of course. Others will do it with research. Others will do similar things for companies. We now did it for the uh, local governments. And so this is the document which hopefully all of you have got in your delegate bags. You can also, of course, find it online on the Congress website. It looks like that. It has 12 statements. Many of them have been uh, presented earlier this morning by Robin, actually. We are, we are a little bit sad that we cannot share them now all with you, but just to highlight one, we prioritize people over vehicles. It's a very, very basic statement. But what the Kaohsiung strategies are now doing is to translate that, to give more detailed information, to explain what this would mean for local government decision-making, action, planning processes, and so on. So these are the 12 strategies which we have brought together, which are expert-reviewed. Even during that Congress, we got further feedback, which we have incorporated. And later, maybe in, in half an hour or so, we will formally adopt and applause for these Kaohsiung strategies for the future of urban mobility. So, global legacy number one, number two also. <laughs> Let's now share with, with the distinguished panelists here what you take home, which additional uh, legacies you see coming out of this festival and the Congress, livable, shared, intelligent. I think I would start with Clayton. Hello, good. Um, so first, I want to thank and acknowledge the great diversity of people who have come from around the world here. Um, which has really enriched our discussion, but also we're diverse not just geographically, but in terms of our starting points. We have very different issues, um, but we've also seen the inspiration that no matter where we're starting from, we all can make progress, and we have seen great examples of progress from very different contexts. Um, so the themes here have been smart, shared, and livable, and I've been inspired, um, and I was trying to to, to just choose a few things, but on SMART, um, I was struck this morning, Robin, in your talk yesterday from Sue Zielinski and others, you know, we've been talking a lot about autonomous vehicles and shared vehicles and electrification, a lot of technology, um, but the challenge we've heard is let's not just predict where technology will lead us, let's create the future that we want. And that proactive approach is what has helped cities in this room make it to where you have gone and inspired us to go. It's, it's really taking hold of that future. I also was uh, struck in terms of smart cities. You know, this is the name of the Indian program, Indian Smart Cities. And uh, that program has really transformed the agendas in cities. In the past, the corporate parastatals have planned a lot of the cities and we got a lot of flyovers. We continue to get flyovers. But now the Indian Smart Cities program, we're learning, is really empowering and engaging the people to plan the city. And when the people plan, they're planning the cities more for people. So now we're getting solutions like complete streets and better walking and cycling environments for the majority of people who walk and cycle. And I think this is incredibly inspirational. Um, on 
livable. This was such a strong theme. Again and again, we heard from many of you from Singapore, from Auckland, from uh, Shenzhen, from Portland, Oregon, about the big steps that you're making forward. Uh, yes, the environment matters a lot. Uh, climate is a very big issue, pollution, but let's talk about the livability of our cities. And, you know, it was inspirational to hear the keynote from Dr. He of Singapore setting that goal that 80% of all residents will live within 10 minutes walk of, of uh, mass transit. That is, that is exceptional. Um, but even to hear the, the other examples from Shenzhen of planning the city and its transport together, this is how we all want to be developing our cities. And if any of you haven't already been to, lived in, or visited Taipei, wow, what an what amazing example of a livable, vibrant city with great cycle tracks and cycle sharing and high quality metro. And, um, it's almost like, like a living museum of, of vibrant communities and a livable city. I really encourage you to visit. Um, and then last, on shared, that's our third theme, and you just mentioned it. I think the principles here, the shared mobility principles, they've, they've started here. This is the first day we're seeing them. They're embedded here in the Kaohsiung uh, strategies. Um, and I think that you're, we're all going to see more and more of this. Um, and I think now is the beginning. It's not the end. It's not that we've, we have finished the job. Now we have to take these ideas forward. I think that's the challenge. It's that challenge to create the future we want. And that's not hard. You're working in very difficult environments with you know, the motorcycles that take up a lot of space and cause all sorts of issues that are really important. Or the car drivers who uh, maybe account for 10% of traffic but 90% of space. Or the private developers or the dockless bike sharing operators, all who have their own agendas. But you have the power, you are empowered to, to make that future with your citizens. Um, as we've seen other cities inspire us to do. So I think that's the challenge taking forward. It's very much what Monica has said and with Robin. Um, and I want to thank you for the inspiration, but also encourage you all to keep it up. Keep going. Thank you, Clayton. And I know how much, how much Clayton regrets that he has to leave Kaohsiung very soon, actually. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. yes, at the end and of the I know you would wish to stay. So let's go to, to your neighbor. Oi Yong, you have impressions which you would like to share with us? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's amazing to see the room being so packed today. And I like the fact that it's actually leaders as well as practitioners, but also in Taiwan. It's incredible. Your civil society, the involvement, and the questions that's been coming at all of the sessions that I've been in, it's been very encouraging. And I think that should be part of the narrative of how you want to shape the city that you would like to be in. So I'm coming from a very practical point of view uh, because I'm in implementation and a lot of the challenges we've faced is really trying to get down to the ground to get it going. So the fact that we see Hamasen being transformed into a pretty much a motor vehicle-less um, district for a month, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I can imagine trying to shut down KL for a month and people would kill me. Um, but again, I think it shows that with leadership, and also with some um, determination and engaging your society, that definitely can happen. I think the key takeaways over the last few days have been, it's very clear, the future is definitely shared. Uh, there is no doubt about that. There, but along with that comes with some challenges as well. So definitely with technology, with services being disrupted, the policies and regulations are also struggling to keep up with that. I think that could be something that all of us as practitioners and city leaders will have to go back and work with the industry as well as the civil society to see how we can work around it. Uh, in KL, uh, or rather in Malaysia, uh, Uber and Grab are absolutely huge. And we see it as a very good way of complementing the first and last mile connectivity. But of course, you can imagine, as with a lot of other cities, there were massive pushback from the taxi industry. But what we decided to do is to actually engage in a conversation with them and see how can we actually level the playing field? Because the question is not to keep everyone happy, but it is what is best for the people. If it is a service that disrupts uh, status quo, but is able to fill in a gap, we very much welcome it, but it has to operate within the law because users, ultimately, their safety, as well as the fairness of competition is key. The other thing that I've heard over and over again in the last few days is actually the theme on integration. 
a lot of cities, like what Clayton said, we all begin from different uh, levels. Some of us are absolutely in a fantastic uh, position to leapfrog some of the things uh, that have already been done. So for example, our colleague from Africa, as well as in India, you now have the opportunity to not make the same mistakes as some of the other developed cities have made. So take the opportunity, engage, and find out what were the mistakes that were made, and don't make them. Whereas for the, de the developed cities, it's incredible to see how the kind of political will that you have in transforming a city. We've heard from Utrecht this morning, it's incredible, I've been there, and it, it just baffles me that you managed to do that in uh, a city that's 100 over years old with existing infrastructure. But again, with the will, there is a way. Last but not least, I think it goes back to governance. Uh, we've talked a lot about very interesting things over the last three days. Very, very advanced technologies, autonomous vehicles. How do we regulate these things? How do we get the technology to be re reliable? Where can we deploy them? But I think ultimately it boils back down to governance. It is really important to make sure that um, all of the players are able to work together with strict and good governance. And of course, this also includes engaging civil society as part of that to see what is the best solution that you can employ for your city. So I very much look forward to bringing back some of these things to see how we can improve some of the things that we're doing in Greater Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we now have our first mass rapid transit system that's up and running. We're a little bit behind Singapore, but Singapore's done a fantastic job. Uh, and of course, Jakarta is also coming online. So we've done a lot of work on public transit. And now's the time for us to bridge the gap in pushing people out of their vehicles. And the only way that you can do that is to address the first and last mile connectivity. So I've had a lot of very, very interesting uh, ideas um, after listening to a lot of the lessons from everyone. And we look forward to bringing this back to implement. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that you will also attend our next congresses to share what, what you have implemented. Let me go now to Tim Schubert. Tim, you are coming from the German Environment Agency. That's an, uh, a huge administration reporting to the Environment Minister. And we know that for uh, issues such as air pollution, noise pollution, these are the classical uh, responsibilities of that office. Now, this office, this administration, has involved itself in the issue of urban transportation. Maybe you explain us why, and you tell us what the ideas are which you have contributed to the Kaohsiung strategies. Yeah, uh, also for me, first of all, a very uh, big thank you to ICLE and the city of Kaohsiung uh, for hosting us. I think you've done an incredible job of uh, hosting such a big events and also showcasing eco-mobility. And we are hoping very much that at some point, maybe a German or European city will uh, do such a great job in hosting uh, the eco-mobility festival at some point in the future. And Monica, as you just mentioned, I'm from the national government. I, I'm not uh, on the ground and close to the people as much as you are, but we did think about uh, how can we improve mobility and livability in cities for people uh, in Germany, first of all. Um, and this festival and congress um, also showed me that we tackle, the sim tackle similar problems. They might be different in scale sometimes, of course, we have more pedestrian paths in Germany than uh, in other cities, for, in for instance, in Asia. But the quality is not as good, and people don't walk as much. And I think um, this is something that I can really take home to my colleagues and tell them that people all around the world are discussing these issues. Um, neighborhood involvement, that was really impressive. Because we know uh, from uh, other examples in Germany how difficult it is to get people to change their habits especially their uh, mobility habits. When you, whenever you own, when you own a car, it's very, very hard that you stop driving it, um, especially if you have a parking space on the street in front of you. And um, this actually brings me to why we are dealing with this topic. About a year and a half ago, uh, we in our section on uh, the environment and transport, together with our colleagues from the noise and uh, spatial development sections, we thought about we can how can we bring these topics together? And how can we create better and livable cities? And what we came up with was a vision of tomorrow's cities, um, where we thought about a city that is green, that has 
um, good public transport, good active mobility networks, uh, that is, uh, has mixed use districts, and is no noise um, and low pollution, obviously. And for this city, um, we set out a goal for car density of 150 cars per thousand inhabitants. And while we know this is uh, very ambitious, and especially looking from a developed country perspective, um, where we have now about 450 cars per thousand inhabitants in big cities in Germany, we believe that we need these goals as a political tool to strive for. And uh, we see in the climate debate that having a goal of uh, two degrees uh, by the middle of the century really gets people to act. And even if we don't know every little step of the way, we, already, we know that there is a goal that we should follow. And um, now, coming from our tomorrow's cities uh, to the Kaohsiung strategies, we see a lot of similarities. And, and that's great, because uh, while we're dealing with implementing all these ideas in Germany, the Kaohsiung strategies really help to spread those ideas across the world. And that's where I also want to urge you to go back to your countries, talk to your national governments, talk to your fellow uh, mayors, uh, council members in other cities that are not convinced yet or that might have not thought about these ideas that much as you did. Because the most important thing is creating political will to implement all the great ideas that we, ha we are having. And uh, the Ecomobility Festival is a great showcase for that. There are other tools that are maybe a little bit smaller, like the European Mobility Week, by, which, by the way, is uh, coordinated by ECLE uh, and is uh, not at all only European. Uh, there are cities from, uh, from Japan, from South Korea, from the United States, Russia, you name it, participating in this week, showcasing eco-mobility in a smaller scale, but every year. And we think this is uh, a great idea to win political support. Living, living labs, as we heard um, earlier today, are another great tool. But um, in the end, I also need to talk about something else which is not as comfortable, and that is money. Because we cannot create these cities without investing in public transport first and in active mobility networks. And uh, again, most of you are convinced and you're already struggling to find the money to implement all these great ideas that you're having. But we see other cities that uh, lack the funds or they don't know how to uh, invest the money in the, right, uh, in the right way. Instead of making their streets smaller so they don't have to invest as much in maintenance, they're just uh, keeping the big streets and, uh, so that people have more incentive, incentives to drive with their cars on them. But I think uh, Kaohsiung as a city is already a great example um, of how to put more money in active mobility, how to showcase active mobility and public transport, and how to stop the ever-growing uh, car um, ownership rates in cities all around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. Um... <laughs> Remember, 150 cars per thousand inhabitants. Maybe for the next Congress, we are going to ask the cities which are representing where they are, how many cars per thousand inhabitants do you currently have? And which goals for the future do you put into your mobility planning? Let's see whether we find one which is at 150 or maybe at 200 or maybe at 300. From 300 onwards, we already know some big cities which, which are not yet or which will never be beyond 400. So, Andrea, you are uh, having now a very um, relevant and, and not that easy job because as the Ecomobility Manager in ICLE, you have to collect all these ideas and to consider how can we continue, which types of projects are we now uh, offering to the cities in which they can work with us in the implementation of the Kaohsiung strategies. So my takeaway for this three-day Congress is the many ways that cities are moving towards a more sustainable future by using the three Congress themes, livable, shared, and intelligent. Although the cities come from all over the world, located in several different settings with unique challenges, opportunities, and constraints, they are common approach in moving their city forward with eco-mobile solutions. First, they started with a clear vision of what they want their city to be. That vision was developed by, at all levels of the city, 
from mayors, leader, city leaders, city, city professionals, and involving the citizens and the business community to help develop, develop that vision. Second, they set goals on how to get there. They made their goals measurable so that they could evaluate their level of success. Third, they were open-minded to new ideas of ways to move people. They recognized that we can no longer solve our problems with techniques we used uh, in the past. We can basically no longer continue business as usual when it comes to planning the future of our cities. So what effect will these three days have on the agenda at ICLEI and specifically eco-mobility? Under the leadership of Mayor Chen, Chen Chu, as chair of the Eco-Mobility Alliance, we have been energized to continue our eco-mobility work with our 22 cities using the Kaohsiung strategies of the future of urban mobility to inspire our cities to work even more aggressively towards a more sustainable, low-carbon, and people-oriented city. In regards to the Eco-Mobility Alliance, we are looking to grow the alliance with new cities that have also have ambitions to advance eco-mobility eco type solutions. These new cities will add to the network and encourage even more innovative ideas. In addition, we will expand our focus of moving people to also move goods and freight since they are an important lifeline to all of our cities. Our work in eco-logistics will be launched next month at COP23 in Bonn, Germany. So I ask the question, are we all in this room ready to transform our cities? From what I have heard in the three days of this Congress, I answer a resounding yes. You get the answer to your questions. So let's be all inspired to continue our work. We took the tradition after these first panel uh, discussion items that we get additions from the floor. And so I would encourage very few and very short but clear and sharp statements and ideally from those of you who represent local governments. What do you take home? Was there anything you, anything where you say, I can now do something better at home? Or is there anything what you say, I would like to leave as my thought here for the rest of my colleagues? We have some micros here, and who representing a local government would just like to add her or his idea on what we take back home? Please, then we start with Boulder. And while you get the micro, I want to say that over there we have two banners. On the one banner is the names of all the Ecomobility Alliance cities, and on the other banners are the 12 Kaohsiung strategy items. From the Philippines, I'm the president of uh, 145 cities. And uh, as everybody knows what's happening in, this, in the Philippines right now, it's the most frequented uh, uh, typhoon area in this part of the Pacific. And uh, with the tremendous uh, knowledge that we have acquired, I think we have about for 10 representatives uh, from different uh, organizations and LGUs. And we are thankful that uh, from what we learned, definitely there's uh, a start, uh, we have to start transforming our cities and de definitely this is a continuing effort of all the cities in the world being the engine of growth to start doing moving people more than moving vehicles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, su Hello? Suzanne Jones, uh, Mayor of Boulder, Colorado, and United States. Um, just a couple thoughts. One is I come away totally inspired. I thank you all. This has been an amazing gathering. Um, one, of course, I already came inspired by the urgency of climate change, but now also the potential for if, if we do some of these things, how it will really not only improve livability, but the potential to really take back the public realm for the people is something I did not um, appreciate. And that is a vision that I think will really appeal. 
I guess I also came away um, pretty inspired that we can't just depend on the technology to get us there, that we actually have to shape and guide it. So I'm going to go home and figure out how to make sure, using policy, um, that the future is electric and shared. And then I guess, finally, just to note that these principles will come in very handy. Um, back in the United States, Boulder sometimes feels a little alone. I mean, there's some great cities like Portland, but we're in the middle of the country and there's not that much vision happening there. Um, and some people just think we're a little crazy and a little anti-car. Um, but to say that there's these global, that the global pr uh, principles, that there's some consensus around and that leading companies and folks that like technology are also behind them, uh, I think will be really helpful so that we're not just being anti-car and looking backwards, but we're pro looking forward. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we are all very happy to hear that we can give you encouragement and strength for your work back home on sustainability issues. More thoughts, more contributions of what you think is now your duty back home, what you bring back home. Robin, we know that you have to leave. Thank you very, very much for coming to us. Give her a big round of applause. She is now going to the train, to the shared train. <laughs> and Clayton, you have to leave soon as well, we know. Yeah, so we are aware of that. Any further items? If not, I'm sure that you all still process and that when we meet next time, uh, we can recap how, how, what could we have done and how has all this encouragement here helped us. I would then propose that we present to you some immediate next steps. And uh, this is that, of course, you can find all the presentations, pictures, blogs, media releases, and so on, on our Congress website. This is also made to help you to disseminate all that at home. And we try to have it also available in Mandarin and maybe even in further languages. There will be a report, a several-page report, with pictures and quotes uh, about the festival and the Congress. There will be video documentations, and there will also be the book about the Kaohsiung Festival, which then will be the third book in the series. There was one on Suwon and one on Johannesburg before. So the more interesting question, however, is what will be our future next steps? And I'm not expecting necessarily uh, answers here, but again, we want to uh, send you home with, with uh, thoughts for, for thinking. Um, we are looking what will be the place for the next Ecomobility World Festival. I mentioned that because several people asked me where can we come together in two years. Uh, it is not yet decided. There are some cities uh, having expressed their interest and we hope that in the next two, three months we are coming closer to uh, the selection and to uh, starting the cooperation with the next host. That will then most likely uh, fall together with the next Ecomobility World Congress. But our message to you is that we do not only want to have global events, as this one is one, regional congresses, uh, sub-regional congresses. This is also very relevant because we want to talk to many, many more of our colleagues. So this is why organizing congresses in all types of setups, in all types of countries, is really our wish and we are there to support it so that we can infect many more people. Then there was an idea which came up yesterday in the press conference that someone said, and it was confirmed actually this morning, motorcycles are such an issue in Asia. So please bring people together on a congress on motorcycles, how to make them less polluting, how to make them less noisy, how to make them being better integrated in our transportation systems. So what I now say actually is a call for a host city. Consider if that would be a theme you would like to uh, host a congress on or, or you, would, you might wish to sponsor a congress on. <laughs> and uh, how can we bring this issue, which is such a burning issue in the, in the debate, and how what can we help to improve the situation? Another idea which came up, and actually this was triggered by the presentation of the mayor of Utrecht, 
uh, we start to have a new problem, <laughs> bike congestion in our cities, <laughs> you, you mentioned it. So we thought that could be an issue of the most advanced cities to think, whoops, what will be our problems of the future? So we could bring together maybe a smaller workshop, these are not yet so many cities, but really to consider if we change the modal split so much, if we are getting so many more bikes in our cities, how do we then deal with them so that we are avoiding having just the next wave of problems? Eco-Mobility Alliance, Andrea mentioned it already, we are very grateful that uh, Mayor Chen is continuing to be the chair and the role of the chair of that group of leading cities is not only helping us with inspiration and with representation, it also goes along with a financial commitment for which we are very grateful. But we don't want that the burden is on your shoulders for too long, respectively, that you can pass that role also to a next city, so we are calling for a city who is chairing or co-chairing the Ecomobility Alliance after 2018. But I'm sure that these are only a few ideas, so if anyone now has something to contribute, what will happen? An event you know where you want to invite your colleagues or a project you wanted to start, it's now a moment where you could mention it because I know that many deals were made in the last three days. Memorandum of understanding were signed, project agreements were made. So if there anything is what you want to announce, do it now. It's just an opportunity in case it was a wish for you. So the next uh, weeks actually, months and years uh, will keep us busy. Maybe I could mention the uh, UN Climate Conference in addition, which uh, the Mayor of Bonn has mentioned already. This is actually starting in five to six weeks in Bonn, the huge annual UN Climate Conference, where we so much hope that the national governments come to further agreements on how to keep the uh, global warming below two or much better below 1.5 degrees. We are there, we host a uh, local and regional government pavilion, we are doing a program over two weeks and we have that one day local and regional leader summit, what the mayor of Bonn mentioned. And in these days we have discussed that there will also be a session about the Kaohsiung strategies co-organized between ICLE and the city of Kaohsiung. So we are going together to that UN climate conference because again and again the, clim the energy and the climate related issues of urban transportation is what concerns us enormously. So that could now be the moment that we ask ourselves, should we now not formally endorse the Kaohsiung strategies for the future of urban mobility? And I propose that we do so with a huge round of applause. And we will later also ask you to come to the stage and we take a photo. But before that, I think our dear friends have made a video which would uh, summarize these three days. Uh, you propose that the panelists go down? Please, yeah. So you can enjoy the video also from your place. Thought you had to. So ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, we will play a video for you, which is a recap of the last couple of days of the Congress, as well as the festival. And we hope that this serves as a token and also um, to once again, help you refresh your memory of your stay in Kaohsiung and also in the last couple of days here. So can we now please show the video? Thank you. future play out 
hier des Amts in Kautschen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to join me to welcome the mayor of Ho City, Kaohsiung, Madam Chen Ju, to give us a few words. We welcome the mayor of Ho City, Kaohsiung, Madam Chen Ju, to give us a few words. Thank you。二零一七生态交通全球盛典，每一个里莫妮卡副秘书长，还有我们盛典的创办人康若先生，刚刚谢谢台达店，我们郑崇华创办人对我们这一次。盛典的支持，今天在场各个城市的一个代表，各个市长、各位代表，还有我们二零一七生态交通全球盛典，哎，我们市政府的团队，尤其是我们交通局跟我们所有的局处，在大家。的支持、热情、参与之下，我们马上就要画下美好的据点。那从二零一六年，我们高雄市接任伊克里生态交通联盟，我个人担任主席，也争取这个盛典能够在高雄来举办，这样。已经两年了，两年内，我们高雄为了一个实践生态交通的理念，我们也邀请大家来高雄探讨生态交通、城市治理的一个策略。我们投入相当多的努力，我们希望能够将哈马星。
，打造成为生态交通一个示范区。我们期盼未来生态交通的社区，除了我们高雄哈马星以外，能够推动到更多更多高雄的社区。当然。我们也不敢说，我今天早上听到我们徐副市长对我们大家的一个答复：未来的哈马星是不是会能不能像这三天一样，未来一个月一样，保持对于低碳、绿能、生态这样的一个状况，可能会恢复。过去的模样，不过我会认为，经过这个生态交通盛典，有这么多社区的参访，我相信对哈马星、对高雄市民，我们一定了解生态交通全球盛典，选择在高雄的意义，选择在哈马星，对高雄是一个非常重要。我相信我们的市民朋友一定会了解，这是一个很重要的价值。哦，这个价值可能不是立即可以达到，但是我们作为我们努力的目标，永远不会放弃。那这三天来，我们有来自五十个城市、二十三位市长、超过九百位。我们议会的专家学者，或者是关心绿能交通所有的好朋友，我们在这里讨论，我们共享经济、公共运输、智慧系统，还有生态交通城市，我们必须实践的这些议题。虽然我们来自不同的国家。我们来自不同的城市，但在生态交通的议题上，我们的共同点一定会超过超过我们有很多不同，我们一定有很多共同的价值跟方向。那透过举办二零一七生态交通全球盛典，我们有机会跟来自。国内外的城市专家学者分享我们高雄的经验。明年的九月，我们高雄市会有机会举办第二届港湾城市的论坛，一样一个港湾城市面临的挑战，面临海洋的污染，哦，这个跟气候的变迁。也有关。我们第一届的港湾城市论坛，有来自三十三个港湾城市的代表聚集在高雄，我们面对面来交换港湾城市治理的经验，那讨论我们共同面临的挑战和可能面临的很多困难，我们寻找可行的一个对策跟。合作的计划，今年二零一七生态交通全球盛典，我们一再强调，合作是一个非常可贵的价值。政府跟民间合作，不同城市之间可以合作，那民间跟民间，民间跟政府等等，还有企业也可以跟政府合作。我们强调合作的价值，这是在二零一七生态交通全球盛典之中，我们高雄市一再期待跟大家的合作。我们希望能够打造更有效力、更有合活力、环境更永续的港湾城市。我们高雄会秉持的。一个作为一个海洋城市好客的精神、热情的精神，我们永远打开双手，欢迎大家来高雄。最后，我一定要非常感谢伊克里
啊，对高雄的信任，我们非常感谢来自很多很多国家大家的参与。我更要感谢整个规划团队非常认真、精心的策划，还有那么多呢。志工的朋友，热心的付出，展现高雄是志工非常可贵的一面。今天我在这里，就是要跟大家说，高雄生态交通世界大会就要圆满落幕。我要跟我的团队。跟所有的高雄市民，要跟大家说，后会有期，我们再见，后会有期，谢谢大家，多拉多谢，谢谢，非常谢谢陈菊陈市长，我们请市长留步，谢谢 ，Thank you，Thank you once again to Mayor Chen， 我们请市长留步。接下来，我们要请 Monica 副秘书长将宣言递交给市长，并且一起合影留念。So, as we have adopted the Kaohsiung strategies, by applause, I would like to hand over the 12 Kaohsiung strategies to you, to Mayor Chen, and that is. So to say, she representing many, many mayors around the world, to which we will now give these Kaohsiung strategies, and we will encourage them all to implement urban mobility, sustainable urban mobility in the future, and also to follow your leadership and your example. So this was the handing over. From us to Mayor Chen, and from Mayor Chen to us, because it is also the duty for us now to share. We would now like to invite all the city representatives to join us here on stage for a big photo. Please, Mayor, come. We invite all the city representatives to join us here on stage for a big photo. Please, Mayor, come. So, all city representatives, please come. Representing inhabitants, citizens, researchers, media people—you are all representing city. So just come up. 我们也要请居民们也一起上台合影留念。All those who will help us to further disseminate the Kaohsiung strategies, please come up on stage. Cameras to your left. So we are celebrating the successful end of this Congress, but at the very same time, it's the start of our duties and our hard work back home. So take this as an encouragement that we go home inspired, strengthened, hopefully, and full of work to implement our agenda. Can I have the guests on stage stand closer to the center of the room so we can capture you all in the photographs? 我们是不是请大家在尽量往中间靠近？可以稍微侧身。You can tilt to the side a little bit so that the cameras can capture you better. Thank you. Our strategies are adopted and now brought to all continents. 各位媒体朋友还有摄影师们也，大家都可以再稍微往后一点，这样子应该是比较容易捕捉到好看的画面。谢谢大家。
So that everybody who wants to share the strategy is further, you are invited to come up on stage. Thank you very much. Please 单位还有朋友还有贵宾一起上台来合影留念 So this is also the moment in which we would like to express our very very strong and cordial thanks First of all to Mayor Chen, to the city leadership, to the deputy mayors, many were involved the many offices which were involved in the city and of course the city council 我们也再次邀请高雄市议会的议员，还有高雄市副市长各个局处的同仁们，一起到台上来。我们再次邀请高雄市议会议员，还有高雄市政府各局处的首长们，请一起到台上来。我们一起合影留念。urban planning, education, police, and many more who have helped to bring that festival together. 非常感谢这一次高雄市政府的各个局处，各位的大力支持。我们再次邀请高雄市政府的团队到台前来，一起合影留念。On behalf of all international participants, our very special thanks. Go to the Transportation Bureau and the Ecomobility Program Team under the leadership of Chen Chef Chen. Come, Chef. Yeah, 特别感谢高雄市交通局，还有生态交通的这次的专案办公室的所有工作人员。can I ask you to put your thumbs up once again for our cameras? We also want to thank, of course, all the speakers, the moderators, and the international participants who came from so far off the huge long trip and who enjoyed their time here so much. And finally, I want to thank the ICLE teams in the various regions. We had six offices to work together here. And I want to express a special thanks to our team in Bonn and ask my colleagues to come here. Beatrice, Itzel, Andrea, Eleanor, Dana, Itzing, Genui. Here, give them an applause, please. So it was a real pleasure. Mayor Chen, thank you again. We will come back and we are now all wish you, those who have to leave, a safe return and those who can stay, more wonderful moments in Hamazen and Kaohsiung. You have the Moon Festival celebration today, so you can really dive into the local culture and enjoy the festival with the people of Kaohsiung. Thank you. Thank you once again. A round of applause to all of the participants as well as all the staff that made 
the Congress and also the festival possible. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Thanks. this concludes the Eco Mobility World Congress 2017. Our great thanks goes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you.